What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? I'm terrible. Thanks for asking. This week, we got something quite different for the channel. As you probably saw from the thumbnail, it's a goddamn tank. For real. A tank. Now, I know, I know, this is a make it shit channel, not a toy channel. But come on, man. It's a goddamn tank. Plus, how many times in a row can I basically do the same thing? While if woodworking YouTube channels are any metric, lots. Just kidding. Come on now. Who doesn't like Blacktail Studios? Same freaking video every time. Body epoxy, cut to wood, body epoxy. So coming in at a whopping $129.99, this thing is a little pricey for what it is. I mean, it's basically just Lego with a screwdriver. But then again, have you seen the prices of Lego lately? Ridiculous. But then again, again, it does have a lot of nice features, and it could be a fun project to do with your kids, or if you're like me, to do by yourself, alone, in your basement, while you cry. Hi, kid, I kid. I only cry in the shower. Oof, too dark, maybe. Anyway, as always, let's make sure everything's here, and here's a list of the tools we're going to need to get this done. So that four-way is just like a tire iron, except you're just holding the nut in place with it while you tighten it down with the Phillips head. Steps one to five. Put together what is basically the suspension system. These little spring and arm thingies. So for me, being a man of advanced age and of a certain nationality, I don't do instructions very well. What directions for that matter? In my head, my way is always best. So that's why this is taking me so long. It's actually pretty easy. They just snap and screw together and then they just get screwed onto the side plates. Give it a minute, you'll see. So while past me is busy with that, let's talk about this kit a little bit. I have to admit this thing was packaged really well. All the parts came in their own little baggies, which are numbered, and the numbers corresponded directly with the directions. So just like Legos. Plus one shit. As for the instructions, they too are pretty solid. Any mistakes made were user error. Really my only issue with this was the size of the instructions. I get one side is the track, which if I'm honest is too small to be of any use, and on the flip side, literally, are the instructions, which are way too big. You're gonna see me folding and unfolding them a lot. You know, if you're gonna steal from Lego, do it correctly. Make the instructions a booklet, and then you could have made the track a tile system, and expandable. And if you're thinking, well, there's probably a link to their website, you're right, there is. But guess what? It's just a picture of this. Kind of stupid. But what do I know? I'm no toy designer. But what I do know is, minus half a shit. So with the suspension done, let's move on to step six through eight, the drive motors and the wheels. These motors seem pretty heavy duty, and at 130 bucks, they better be. These are geared motors, so I guess this thing doesn't have variable speed. We'll save the deduction for later, they go in super easy, two nuts and two bolts. Look at this screwdriver, man. The tip is shredding already. We're like eight screws in. Totally unacceptable. Come on, that's gonna cost them one full shit. Next to the shaft adapters. These are so we can mount the drive gear, or drive wheel as they call it, to the motor. Again, super easy, barely an inconvenience. It slides over the motor, and then the two set screws hold it on. Now, remember what I said about user error? Well, here is one instance. The screw head side of the nut and the bolt combo should have been reversed. That's why it's hitting the set screws. The nuts are taller than the heads. In the picture, it is the right way, so this one's on me. Stupid genetics. Anyway, flip them and all set. But still, that's some narrow clearance. It's less than a millimeter. As for the drive gears, same deal. They slide over the newly installed shaft adapters and screw down to it. Hey, don't laugh at how long it took me to get that screw in that hole. You'll be old one day too. You know what's great about filming with a GoPro? Absolutely nothing. The best part is when it overheats in a 65 degree basement for no reason, with no warning. I was gonna go on a whole rant about how GoPro has gone down the drain, they're overpriced, the app just sucks, and shit like this. But you know what? They've always sucked. There was just no other options. Anyway, enjoy the side angle for once. The actual wheels, while well, they just screw on, 
And then they have some cheap plastic hubcaps that snap over them so you don't see those ugly screws. That are recessed anyway. I don't know, maybe don't put the hubcaps in the bag and give us a decent screwdriver. Just saying. Funny, I guess I gave up on that screwdriver somewhere back there and didn't realize it. So I'm using old blue. So technically, there is one tool required for this kit. A good old 6-in-1 screwdriver. Steps 8, 9, and 10. Installing the brains of this operation, an Arduino Uno, and its expansion board. If you don't know, an Arduino is a microprocessor. Basically a mini computer. Mm, kind of. It's a little bit more involved than that, but I'll save that for another video. For now, it's what controls... everything. This mounts to the bottom plate with four screws and four plastic standoffs. I've used a version of Arduino on the channel before, in my time video, where I make a digital timer. Link above. This version is quite larger physically than that one, but it's basically the same thing. I would think they should have gone with an Arduino Mega. It's much more powerful. Maybe if they did, they could have been speed controlled motors? Hmm? I guess the price difference of six bucks was way too much for them. After that comes the accelerometer board. This pushes into the expansion board with eight pins, male on this board, female on the expansion board. Then two screws and a standoff secure it. And it is pretty rigid. And this board's purpose, in case you were wondering, or just curious, is to let the Arduino know if the tank is actually moving, and which way it's moving. Now the expansion board is where we're going to hook up all of our cables, batteries, motors and stuff. This too pushes into the Arduino with pins, though it's a hell of a lot more. And the connection is also really tight. I guess that's why there's no standoffs and screws for this one. It's really not needed. Steps 11 and 12. The battery box and a line tracking board. Now we all know what a battery box is. It's a box with batteries in it. It's secured with two screws. As for the line tracking chip, well, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it tracks the black line on the opposite side of the instructions. As for how it works, well, there's three sets of infrared LEDs with IR receivers pointed at the ground. The infrared LEDs shine over where the tank is driving, and since black will absorb most of the infrared light, this is what the middle set is looking for, less reflected IR light. And as long as the left and right sets see most of the reflected lights, the Arduino knows that the tank is on the right path. I think that's about as simple as I can make it, with it still making sense. And it mounts to the bottom plate with four screws and four standoffs. Easy peasy. Step 13, the camera bracket and its servo motors. Man, those are some small screws right there. Maybe this thing should have come with a precision screwdriver to put these in. But you know, that might have cost another 30 cents. Oh, wait a minute. I understand now. The screwdriver is supposed to shred. This way, by the time you get to these small screws, the tip is the right size. That's frickin' ingenious, man. Yeah, minus another coat of shit for no included precision screwdriver. Honestly, putting this assembly together had to be the most challenging part of the build. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you. One, the aforementioned micro screws. Seriously, did they have to be that small? I doubt it. Two, this has to be the cheapest plastic I have ever had the privilege of touching. And yes, I say privilege because it's not often you find something this cheap. Three, look, servo motors are servo motors. This type just hit it with a little pulse of power and they move it a step in the direction you ask it to. These little ones are not the best quality, but for this application, they're just fine. My problem is not with the motors, it's the housing. The screw stripped all the plastic out and now it's all loosey goosey and barely holding together. They should have just used nuts and bolts. They had the room and it already looks like shit anyway. Actually, if they used nuts and bolts, they could have recessed the heads and the nuts, and it would have looked just fine. You know, the more I watch this back and think about it, the more I really don't like this thing. Oh yeah, minus a full shit, by the way. So what I was doing back there with it powered up is making sure the motor was 100% calibrated. They recommend this in the instructions. It's just making sure the motor is all the way to one side. So we can skip step 14, Step 15 was calibrating the servo motor, and then we can move right on to step 16, the ultrasonic sensor. This mounts to a plastic plate with four nuts and bolts, then that plate mounts to the top plate of the tank with two screws. The ultrasonic sensor works kind of like the line tracking sensor, 
except it uses sound. A sound wave shoots out of the transmitter, it goes however far, bounces back, and is picked up by the receiver. Now the Arduino knows how far away an object is, and it can avoid it. Now this is a nice feature to have, but we'll see how good they implement it. Mmm, that's some good foreshadowing right there. Step 17, the camera module. That's a good looking module right there. And I'm pretty sure that's where they're hiding the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, because that Uno sure don't have them. This mounts to a plate with four screws and two standoffs, and then it just clips to that piece of shit assembly. As for the camera, it's got a 2K resolution, so honestly, not too bad. Do we really need 4K on this? Now for the rest of the steps, well, it's just putting on the side panels and hooking up the wires. It's two screws for each panel, nice and easy. And the wires are pretty idiot proof, meaning they're all marked on the board, so no worries there. It also comes with a micro USB and whatever the old printer one is called. Oh, look what I just found. The precision screwdriver. Fine, you can have back that quarter shit. Those USB cables, one is for the battery pack to charge it, that's the micro one, and the other is for the Uno. Why the Uno still has giant USB connectors in 2025, I can't tell you. It's easily the largest component on the entire board. I don't know, it is what it is. The cables all around are pretty high quality, even the ones for the breakout boards. But man, those USB ones are short. 20 inches to be exact. I hope your charger or computer is very close. Oh yeah, and the camera mounts to the top with four screws. Lastly, we have the tracks. So while I let you guys watch past me fight with this thing, for what took way more time than I'm willing to admit, here's the part where I ask you, in my best YouTube voice, Hey, if you like what I'm doing and you want to see more content like this, hit that like and subscribe button, and please leave a comment down below. Sorry, YouTube makes us do that. I can't help it. It's like some kind of lore or something. Now, with that out of the way, and I've got a minute or 20, those freaking tracks, man. Let me shoot the shit with you. You know, I don't know what happened with that last video. I personally thought it was a pretty good one. But no one watched. It was weird. I mean, I'm not bragging, but I get quite a bit of views on this channel. Like between 500 to 1,000 on most videos. Come on, that's like more than CNN gets most nights. What? Their 500 means 500,000? Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? I see. CNN? Yeah, CNN. Really? Well, okay, I guess I'll stop breaking then. Really? CNN? I mean, <laughs> All kidding aside, anyone out there in YouTube land have any advice? Like, what do you folks want to see? I mean, I know this stuff is kind of niche, but come on, we could do better than that. Let me be real out for a minute. I never really had high hopes for the channel. I never expected it to do like my mate Vince numbers. Honestly, I really just do it for fun. I mean, I'm doing this stuff anyway, why not film it? All I really want out of it is for companies to send me free shit. You know, for reviews. You know, a soldering station here and a oscilloscope there. I don't ask much. I don't know, maybe I'm being impatient. We'll see how this one does. It's a little different. Hey, as long as a couple of people watch and enjoy it, I'm cool. Anyway, so like 20 minutes later, I figured out that removing the sprocket was the best way to get the tracks on. It would have been nice if they would have put that in the instructions. Maybe I was doing something wrong. I doubt it. No minuses for that, though. They have way more issues coming up. So look at that. Assembly complete. Only 14 minutes. Nice. Okay, so the code is already on the Uno, so let's give it a try. Forwards, backwards, left and right. All looking good. Nice job. Now comes the part where you have to download their app and have all your data stolen on behalf of the CCP. I'm kidding. Relax. The CIA already has it. Actually, well, I think I had to run through it once or twice. Oh, look at that. Camera's up. Oh, look. Everything's working. 
moving back and forth, up and down. So far, so good. Let's take this thing outside and see if it really works. So this is the included remote. It just sucks. It has buttons for the control, which are not great. You can't turn it on the fly. Well, maybe if you use two hands. And if the audio receiver is facing away from you, it can't see it. It should have been put on the top, but what do I know? The app, on the other hand, is pretty functional. It has a joystick, as you can see. And let's be honest, the camera is pretty bad. I don't know if it's the transmission rate, but that is definitely not HD. As for the driving, it's okay, it handles fine. It turns on a dime. Again, I wish you could control the speed. Weirdly enough, there is a speed option in the upper right, but it doesn't do anything. Maybe if you dive into the code, it'll work. Something to look into. For you. I ain't doing it. I got other shit to make. And the obstacle avoidance out of the box is also okay. It didn't see that hose at all. Larger things, it's fine. Again, I'm sure that's adjustable in the code. Anyway, as for a rating, I'll save you guys all the addition and subtraction and just say it's two and a half shits. Maybe three. If it wasn't for all the extras you get on the website, it would have been a one and a half. Is it the worst toy? No. Is it worth the price? Eh, maybe. The expandability factor is super nice, and it may get you, or whoever you're gonna gift it to, into electronics and coding. So, yeah, it's a middler toy that most are gonna put together in a night, play with it for a day or two, and then forget about it until they find it in the attic in 30 years and go, oh, I remember. But that's me. What do you guys think? Is it worth the money? Would you try your hand at some coding and add something to it? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, I'm out of here. Here's some sexy bureau, and as always, thanks for watching.